You're watching KCMI TV. Well, thank you for joining me. And I want to take our text today out of the book of Numbers, chapter 23. And I was uh, just meditating on the Lord yesterday, and this verse really began to come up in my spirit. Uh, Numbers chapter 23 and verse 20, or verse 19. And I love how this starts out. This is really what I want to deal with, but we're going to read the whole verse. God is not a man, hallelujah, that he should lie, neither the son of man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So I want to deal with two aspects of this first phrase, God is not a man. And so I want to talk a little bit first of all about what God isn't. And the verse is very plain here. He said this. He said, God is not a man. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about what man is. If you go to uh, the book of, I think it's in Jeremiah, uh, verse 17 and verse 9. This is talking about men. And he said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And so with, I really, I, I know this completely with all of us. So many people lose out with God because they are holding him to the standard of a man instead of letting him be God in their life. And whenever you hold God in your life to a lower standard of man and man's conduct and man's ability, you're going to be disappointed. This is why the Bible says that God makes it very plain. He said, I'm not a man. And he said, I don't lie. And Jeremiah here, he's talking about men. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that feel like, well, you know, men have a good heart. And, and, and you know, at the core, uh, people are good people. That's not what the scripture teaches. The heart of man is evil. The Bible says this. He says this: the man is desperately wicked. Uh, men, and the Bible also declares this. He says man is born into sin and shaped in iniquity. If, if man was inherently good, then God never would have had to send his son to the cross. And so, uh, so many times when we approach God... We approach him with the limitations of men. And we're going to wind up disappointed. And I wrote this down. This came to me in prayer this morning. Unbelief in our life will make God a man. But faith will let God be God. And so, so many times we go to God in prayer but we pray to him like he's a man, like he has limitations. And unbelief will put God in that frame. See, men are going to disappoint you. Uh, over the years, I can think uh, of how many, how many pastors I had that, that disappointed me. I told my wife a while back, I said, it's amazing that, we, that we're serving God, that we're saved that we're not just full of bitterness and cynical because of all the disappointment that we have seen in people. But see, I know this about God. He's not a man. And so I don't hold God to the same standards that I hold men to because God is not a man. And whenever we are, the enemy wants to bring God in, in your consciousness and your ability to see who God is. He wants to bring God down to a man. And I thought of this verse um, in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 16. The Lord said, there will come a day when God will reveal the devil. And this is very interesting how he describes him. And he said, you will look at him and say, is this the man that made 
the earth to tremble. Notice here that Isaiah, when he's writing this, he calls the devil a man. Now, we know that the devil is, was a creative uh, being, but when he was stripped of his heavenly position, then he went into the limitations of a man. This is why in the garden he couldn't touch Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had to give him permission, and once they gave him permission, then he was able to wreak havoc in their lives. But I can tell you this, the devil is not omnipresent, he's not omniscient, and he's not God. And this is why the Lord is, is here is talking about it. We put too much trust in men because we bring God down to that level. And we, instead of believing that God can do anything, I think it's in Hebrews, it says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. What does that mean? That means when you come to God, you need to believe that he's God. And then it says, and when you believe that he's God, then he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And some people say, well, God won't answer my prayers. That's because you're praying to God like he's a man. And we waste so much of our prayer time in interceding and asking God for things, but we're really praying to him like he has limitations. And the Lord said this, he said, I am not a man. So don't talk to me like a man. Don't address me like a man. He said, I am God. And he said, I don't lie. And he said, I don't have to repent. Can I tell you that, that how many of us in our lifetime can look back and we put our trust in a man and then we find out they lied to us. Or how many times did we put our confidence in a man and then we find out that they changed their mind and it brought havoc in our, into our lives. And yet the Lord says this, he said, if I'm not a man, then I'm God. And so you, when, when I come to the Lord now, and this is something that is evolving in me, but I know this, that if we're not careful, we will allow how men have treated us in our lives to shape our idea of how God's going to treat us. And it's an insult to God when we bring God down to a standard of men and say, well, this is, this is how God is. And, you know, I, there's lots of people that don't go to church today because they're so jaded because they will say, well, I was hurt or, or pastor or somebody failed me and they act like it's God that did it and God didn't do it. It was a man that did it. And you will never be successful in the Lord until you can separate people from the identity of who God is. Hallelujah. God cannot lie. If God makes you a promise, he will perform it. That's what he says in, in this verse. Um, he said, I, I will perform that which I have spoken. And so uh, there is a huge difference. Uh, when the Lord's talking about men, he said, uh, the heart of man is desperately wicked above all things. And when um, you go back and you read, I, I think it's the verse um, in Numbers here when God is talking about uh, desperately wicked. Uh, when he, this is literally what it means, man. It means not only desperately wicked, it means sick, frail, and mortal. So this is what God's saying. I'm not sick. I'm not desperately wicked, and I'm not frail, and I'm not mortal, or I'm not a man. And for you to get a revelation of how to get your prayers answered, it goes back to Hebrews. 
Now faith, hallelujah, is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He who cometh to God must believe that God is God. And will say, well, Pastor, you know, I, I believe that I know God's not a man. But then in our petitions, we come to the Lord and listen, situations and the impossible in man's world, if you're not careful, will make you begin to treat God like he's a man and that he has limitations. God has no limitations. There is nothing in your life right now that God, with the wave of his little finger, cannot reverse in a moment. This is why that without faith, it is impossible to please God because you have to believe in the identity of God. You have to believe in the nature of God. You have to be convinced above all things that when I'm coming to God, I'm not coming to a man. This is, uh, you know, for me personally, I, I don't seek out a lot of counsel. I mean, as far as you know, you get overwhelmed, and, and I, don't, I don't call a lot of people and say, I don't know what to do. Would you just pray with me? Because I understand that I have a direct line to God as a believer and that God has the answers. He knows what he's doing. He can do anything. And so when I come to the Lord, I'm not coming to him with the thoughts, well, God, my situation is going to limit you because if it limits God, then God's a man. He just has a few more tricks up his sleeve or a little bit more ability than the average person. But the Lord said this, I'm not a man. And he said, I don't lie. And he said, I don't repent. And that, that word repent is not talking about sin. It's talking about changing one's mind. And once the Lord makes his decision, he said, I don't have to change my mind. And when the Lord makes promises to us, he will perform that which he has spoken. Now, see, that's what he said. He said, and I will perform that which I have spoken. And so, boy, I feel a rhema unction of the Lord right now. I loose through this camera into your life that God will break this mentality off of you. See, the devil, the Bible calls the devil a man. And so he wants to reduce God to his level. Because he said all the time, he said, I will ascend to the heights. I will be a, a raise above God. And he was trying to get on that same level. So when God cast him out and put him on a different level, the devil is trying to pull God down to where he is. And you can't let the enemy do that. And so when you come to the Lord, you can't come to the Lord allowing yourself to be overwhelmed by your circumstances. You have to come to the Lord with the belief that, yeah, I'm dealing with something that's way above my ability to fix, but I'm excited because I'm coming to somebody that has the answer. I'm not coming to a man. I'm coming to the Almighty God that when I petition Him, the Spirit of the Lord is going to answer my prayers. He that cometh to God must believe that he is God. And then when you believe that he is God, Hebrews says this, that the Lord is also a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Too many people come to the Lord and they just want to tell God how bad it is, but they never expect God to change their circumstances. And God's saying, I don't need you in my presence if you're just going to come and complain to me how bad it is. When you come into the presence of the Lord, you come with the divine assurance that God is going to turn this thing around, that God is going to open heaven over my life, that God is quickly going to show up, that this is not going to be a long, drawn-out process, that the devil is a man, but God is not a man, and that he's full of the power of the Holy Ghost. So I loose the supernatural today into your life. I loose this word of the Lord into your spirit. That when you get done listening to this podcast, you will say, oh my goodness, my God is not a man. Hallelujah. He's not desperately wicked. He's not limited. He's not inherently evil. But he is the righteous entity of all things. 
Well, I got fired up today because I could feel it in the spirit. I pray that it just goes through the cameras to you and that God will just uh, excite you. Hallelujah. That there is nothing with God that's impossible. I love you. Tune in Sunday, 3 o'clock, Regeneration Nashville for another great word of the Lord. And if not, I'll see you next Wednesday on the podcast. God bless you. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org. And for the latest updates or videos, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. God bless you.